In my video series, Rediscovering Radio, I've documented my return to amateur radio after a break of over 40 years. And in today's video, I'm going to look at how I moved to using a multiband, multi-mode transceiver, the FT817ND, and what I learned about setting it up and using it. As with so many topics, there's a lot of information available but it took quite a lot of effort for me to find out exactly what I needed. So here's a little snapshot of what I discovered. I've only recently become aware of the existence of the FT817, but already it has a 20 year history and is actually a little bit retro. But having discovered it, I've realized that it's an extremely popular low power transceiver. So I looked for one to buy and ended up buying two. But one of them came with an automatic tuner, which was very useful. My initial interest was with CW, and that took quite a bit of effort to set up. Both radios were set up differently, mainly on VHF, and one of them had been exclusively used for digital modes, about which I'm still fairly mystified. So after a first couple of unsuccessful attempts, I decided to reset the radio to factory defaults. And this is my first recommendation if you buy one of these radios or anything similar. And to do this, all you need to do is hold the home button and power on, and all your memories and settings will be cleared away, and you'll be ready to set up the radio to suit your own way of working. When I first tried my FT817, I realized I had some setting up to do. I wasn't sure how to switch between the front and rear antenna connectors and when I plugged in my Morse keyer it really didn't work properly. So I quickly found a menu for that but then found it wasn't switching to transmit, the light was staying green and not red. As well as that I didn't know what output power I was using and the RF and gain and squelch control was set to squelch and I wasn't ready to try VHF at that point. In addition there are two control dials and I wasn't sure how to easily and quickly move around in frequency. So I realized I had some serious finding out to do. So once I've reset the radio to its factory defaults, I set out to find the relevant menu items and get a basic setup working. These options are in two distinct sections. Operating functions, which are activated by a short press on the F button followed by rotating the select knob to choose a function and then pressing one of the A, B or C buttons. Or menu choices, which are activated by holding the F button for a second or so, then rotating through the menus. Once in the right place, the menu choices can be selected with the main dial and then saved by pressing and holding the F button again. Starting with the operating functions. The default settings restored some of the functions I needed, and going through them one by one, the first one I checked was number 8 to see if AGC was on. By pressing the letter key under the option, I cycled through the choices with the dial and left it on auto. Number 9 was next, pressing the A key to choose a power level, and I eventually worked out that with external power, no bars means 5 watts output, the next press gives 3 bars for 2.5 watts, then 2 bars for 1 watt and 1 bar for half a watt. These levels can be adjusted in the service menu which is activated separately. If you're using the internal battery, the bar indicators are basically the same but the radio defaults to 2.5 watts shown by the 3 bars. But after pressing through all the options, once again you come back to the icon and it flashes, which means 5 watts has been selected. Function 10 provided the answer to my earlier CW question. Choosing B gives a choice of activating break-in operation, which in effect means using CW to transmit or not. When it's not selected, it can be used as a practice mode for more sending, and that's how mine was set up when I first tried it. The C button let me activate the keyer, so now I was fully set up for basic CW sending, and the red transmit light comes on when the key is pressed. 
Moving on to the menu items, I stopped first at menu number 7 to choose between front and rear antenna sockets. I started by using my homemade antenna with a BNC connection to the front, and I often change this setting as I use the radio differently. Continuing to menu 21, I adjusted the CW speed and then went to menu 45 to check that the RF gain or squelch control was indeed set to RF gain. So I left most of the settings as default to start with and at that point decided to give the radio a try and to get the feel of it before changing anything else. Just turn this noise down a bit. With the radio now basically set up I quickly started making CW contacts on 20 metres and 17 metres and then started to explore the front panel controls and the menu options a bit more. And I daringly decided to try some QRP SSB, which I was quite nervous about having not done it for so long. The FT817ND seems very noisy at first and I also found it quite awkward to move quickly between frequencies until I realised just how many options there are to make this easier. So, let's take a look at some of the things I found to help me. Taking the noise aspect first, obviously putting the RF gain to maximum gives, gives the most sensitivity, but it is like listening in a rainstorm, so now I turn it down as much as possible Yes, there we are. Still leaving some headroom for the volume control. There is an option to bypass the receiver RF preamplifier, and this can be found in the operating functions as option A IPO intercept point optimization. And this is useful as you go down in frequency, mainly below 20 meters. In this same option list, button C activates the optional narrow filter for CW if you have one installed. I've installed the Sota Beams laser beam filter on my radio. It works really well and I've made a video about it in this series. I'll put a link in the description. This is a good example of how holding one of these options will take you to the related menu so here we can see that when I hold the C button the display jumps to the optional filter menu number 38. Option B, the attenuator, cuts all signals and noise by 10 decibels and I guess is only useful on rare occasions when signals are really strong. Moving around the bands is straightforward using the up and down keys on top of the radio but with the dial set to fine adjustment it's slow to whiz through a band and I was slow to realise that the select control moves in steps on HF as well and these can be set in menu number 47. So I've set mine to 1 kilohertz and find that really helpful. Pushing the control briefly lets you move in steps of 1 megahertz, also very useful at times. With lots of tech, it's easy just to use a handful of features, so it was really interesting to explore a bit more. And a really useful trick I found in the manual was to use the home button to home in on a CW signal. If you press and hold it, it plays the radio CW tone and by tuning the dial until the signal you want to contact is at the same pitch, you can be sure that you've matched the frequency of the station. The home button is of course for going to a home frequency and this can be set by operating function 2. By pressing A and then holding the home key for one second, that frequency is stored. And then, whatever you're doing, by pressing home, you'll go back to that frequency and operating mode. So, if I now go to a different band and mode, I can just press that button and get back to my starting point. Following on from that, it's always useful to have some presets or memories to move between. And a quick way to do this is to use the VM key. Pressing this shows any stored memories and by just turning the select control you can move between them. It just goes straight to that point and you can carry on operating. If you then move the main dial you can tune around that frequency. 
So I'm now at the QRP end of 17 meters and I can just search around. This is M tune mode and is shown on the display. And to exit this, press the VM key again for the menu and a second time to go back to VFO mode. And if what you go back to is a surprise, just push home to get back to your home frequency. To store a memory preset, tune the dial and operating mode, press F and go to row two and press A, labeled MW, to show unused memory channels. Choose one with the select control and hold the A button again to store it. Back in standard operation or VFO mode, another occasionally useful button is the clarifier. Pushing this allows you to move the receiver frequency away from the transmit frequency. An arrow appears on the display to show if receive is higher or lower than transmit, or a dash to show that they are the same. Push the button again to turn this function off. I find this useful when using the optional filter sometimes to get just the right listening offset. Until recently, the last time I spoke into a radio microphone was in the early 1970s using an AM Heathkit transmitter on 160 meters. Although I could listen to SSB on my HRO receiver, I didn't have the equipment to transmit it. Recently, I really had no idea if this was possible with five watts of power, and my first few attempts were fruitless. So I looked into the menus and found that there is a meter option on row nine of the functions and by pushing the B ALC button, I could monitor the mic level. By then choosing menu 46 and moving the mic gain up, as well as speaking very close to the microphone, I managed to see some movement on the meter. CQ, 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 G4, BSK, Golf 4, Bravo, Sierra, Kilo, 20 meters. I ended up with a mic level of 90 instead of the default 50. I also set the mic switch to number two, optimized for Western languages. This produced results very quickly. I tried calling a couple of stations on 20 meters and 17 meters and had some good reports. And one Italian operator even played back my voice to me. And I was pleasantly surprised at how well it worked. My main interest is in QRP CW, so I was keen to set this up as thoroughly as possible. In the menus, there are a number of settings for CW keying, but apart from speed, there was actually no need for me to change them, with the exception of the break-in timing. In the initial setting up, I turned on break-in keying. This means the radio will automatically switch between receive and transmit to let you hear what's going on during pauses in keying. I found the default of 250 milliseconds too short and it seems to me that it puts a lot of strain on the radio with relays clicking in and out frequently. Menu 17 CW delay lets you change this so I now have it set to 450 milliseconds and I find this works well for me. The only button I haven't mentioned yet is the lock button, and there is a menu for that too, which lets you choose whether to lock the whole panel or just the dial. I've made lots of contacts around the world now using my FT817, and I really love this radio. Even though it's a basic transceiver by today's standards, its functionality and size would have been unthinkable when I started amateur radio half a century ago. I hope I hope I've just made the video that I was looking for when I started using this radio. And I also hope that you found my summary interesting and helpful. The Soto Beams filter for the FT817 is the topic of another video in this series. And the third one is about powering it up and how much power comes out the other end. So thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with more videos about electronics, radio and technology in general.